But you're so tall that it's great that the, uh, the light is moving. Like she's like, <laughs> We're going to interview him over here. Okay, sorry, I'm not going to interview You can come over here, right there. Thank you want to stand right here for me? No, it's okay. You got it? Okay, there you go. Hi, my name is Joanna Guerrero, and our um, audience is a lot of actors and artists. So we just wanted to ask you, do you have any advice of, um, for actors and artists out there being uh, lead of this amazing company? Um, my advice is just have a strong stomach, have the ability to stick around and survive the business until you get your shot. Um, there's, no, there's no guidebook. Um, it's just about who can stay around and deal with the the ups and downs, the rejection and things like that to survive uh, what everybody goes through and eventually you'll get your chance as long as you're making relationships and uh, having casting director, casting directors know you and respect your work, you'll be alright. And then just one last question for you. Um, you know how they always say in auditioning that there should, you, can, you should make like a strong choice or a hot choice to separate yourself from others. Can you give like an auditioning tip for our actors out there when they go into the room to stand out from the rest? Uh, yeah, what I do is I always try to do something that's not on the page. Uh, that way the casting director will, you know, they may not pick you for the job, but they'll remember you because you'll stand out because they're going to see hundreds of people for the same job. and. Most of them are going to do the same thing over and over and over, and that gets boring. But somebody that does something different stands out. So they may not give you that job, but they may remember you and give you another job in the same project or keep you in mind for something else. Thank you so much. That was great. Absolutely. Right. Thanks. Hi, Stefan. My name is Steven. Steven, I'm sorry. Sure. Sorry about that. Hi, Steven. How are you tonight? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. So. How do you feel about making such a powerful movie with such a powerful message about domestic abuse? Uh, I, I feel good that I could be a part of the, uh, the deliverance of the message. Um, I didn't feel great about playing the character because it's so opposite of who I am as a person, but um, I think it's an important message that needs to get out, and I think that uh, you know I'm, I'm very happy to be able to be a part of that. And I hope that uh, some people can see themselves in my character and choose to you know go ahead and get help uh, I hope that some women can see their partner in my character and choose to get away from that and even the men out there who are, are being physically abused uh, you know it's the same thing you guys should you know get away from the situation as well and if you're out there abusing your partner how can you say you love someone and do that to them you know you really have to take uh, consideration of what you're saying and match it up to what you're doing or else you're living a lie. I don't think anybody should be subjected to to any kind of violence and abuse, mental, physical, emotional at all, uh, especially in a loving relationship, especially if children are involved. So if you're in it as a victim, get away. If you're in it as somebody who's doing the abusing, get help and stop abusing the people you love. Thank you, you said that so beautifully. So when you first read the script and you saw how your character was abusive and possessive, what did you think? Did you think it would be challenging? Uh, yeah, I knew it would be very challenging. Like I said, it's opposite of who I am as a person, so I don't know that guy. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't live in his skin ever, so I, I really had very little frame of reference to draw from when it came to him. Um, so it, it was challenging physically, uh, and, and, and emotionally, I was drained when we were done with this because I just, it was so difficult. There was a tug of war going on between my, my soul and my brain, you know? So I have to tell you, you look great in a suit. Are you a suit type of man or sweatpants and a hoodie? I'm both. You know, I, I was a professional athlete, so, you know, in my spare time, I'm, I'm wearing athletic gear and trying to, you know, be comfortable. But when I have to do what I have to do, you know, I have Woody Wilson on my team to make me look. Hold on, wait. Oh, look at that. Woody Wilson. Hold on, wait. Get out of the light. Get out of the light. There we go. Woody Wilson. And if you look at that side, you'll see exclusively oh. tailored for me. How sharp so, is that? <laughs> so I have Woody on my team to make me look right and, you know, sharpen me up when I need to. So if you don't want to answer this next question, you don't have to, but me as a journalist, I just have to ask you, because so many people out there are worried about this issue that's going on, the NFL players, do you think that they're sending a good message? Oh, I absolutely think they're sending a good message. 
Listen, here's the thing. Protest is not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to disrupt life or else it wouldn't be a protest. It would just be people standing around saying things. Uh, the, the NFL has to stand up. I'm glad they all finally got some sort of a stimulus to join forces and do it together. And I do want to make a point about all of the things that are being said about disrespecting of the flag and the veterans, the soldiers and the active, uh, uh, the, the veterans and the active service members. These people are not disrespecting service members, whether they be active or veteran, okay? What they're actually doing is they're standing in solidarity with the service members, active and veteran. Because if you were a soldier and you were told that you were going to fight a war for freedom, justice, and liberty for the people of America, and then you found out that the system in America wasn't providing the freedom, liberty, and justice to the people, would you not feel like you were sent there under false pretenses? Would you not feel that you were sent there for nothing you're putting your life on the line for something that is not being delivered so these they are not disrespecting the soldiers they are disrespecting the system that is disrespecting the soldiers by not giving what they fight and die for that is the message that I want to put out there I'm very much in line with the NFL players I've been on board with it since the beginning I don't mean to offend any uh, flag uh, patriots or veterans I have veterans in my family my uncle was a ranger my cousin was a marine it's not about that it's about the words to the Pledge of Allegiance the words to the Star Spangled Banner if you listen to the Pledge of Allegiance one nation indivisible un indivisible is that true right now? We're divided. One nation indivisible under God with liberty and justice for all. Is that true right now? So that's what these men, these college educated, professional, accomplished men are standing up for. So please, take that into consideration. Really understand what they're saying. We understand, you know, they understand that there's some people out there that are, that are offended by what's happening but they're not trying to offend the sensibilities that you guys are taking it as. And if you just listen to the conversation, you might be able to find some common ground and, and join together. We're all Americans. And that's the entire point. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you told us that. Um, so congratulations on the movie. Thank I can't you. wait to see it. And yeah, have a great night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you just say thanks for watching Fab TV? Fab TV? Fab TV. Yes. Hey, hi. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how you doing? I'm Stephen Bishop. We want to thank you for watching Fab TV.